And welcome back to another episode of Casey Campbell's video cast. Of course, I'm Casey Campbell from Great Lakes Post. And joining me right now, the head coach of Grand Valley State University, Mr. Matt Mitchell, is joining us. Uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, what have you been up to these past few weeks? Actually, uh, yeah, very busy, to be honest with you. You know, I think we're, we're managing three things. One is our, you know, our current players. Um, you know, there was some academic uh, concerns when, when classes went online. So we're trying to help support those guys academically. Uh, really trying, Casey, to keep the, the kids connected. I think the, the football is a very team sport, a social sport. There's a lot of time in a locker room. And uh, given the circumstances, a little bit more isolated. So we're trying to do things with, you know, position meetings, with Zoom team meetings. Um, you know, we have, a, we have an app where we can all kind of chat together on it, you know, just for some levity. But trying to make, maintain some interconnectivity. Um, and, and along with that, too, trying to provide resources so they can stay active. That's probably one of my biggest concerns with all this as a college football coach is, you know, you spend January, February, March in off-season program, and then, you know, you, you, can't, you can't get to a gym you know, in the state of Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and you're forced to do a lot of body weight stuff and things in your living room. I'm super concerned about that heading into the season. So trying to provide all those things. So that's one thing. Two, recruiting. Um, we're doing a tremendous amount with the class of 2021, uh, evaluating prospects, um, communication with those guys and there, and then, um, you know, trying to plan as much as we can. There's certainly a lot of unknowns, but it's my responsibility as a head coach to assume that we're going to have a season in the fall and, uh, you know, start to look at some different scenarios for what the month of July and August might look like if we are, in fact, playing in September. How's recruiting been and the changes with that? Uh, you know, it's been, it's been um, yeah, I think there's some, some positives and some negatives. On the positive side, I think we've had a much better opportunity to evaluate tape. You know, we spend a lot of time um, writing up reports on tape and things like that because we have more time to access huddle highlights. I think we're making great connections with recruits because right now a lot of these uh, prospects, Casey, are at home. Uh, their phones are close to them. So when you hit them up on Twitter, they respond back and you can get pretty great communication. I think the most difficult thing is, you know, we used to head out in high schools uh, and, and talk about some of these guys to coaches, teachers, principals. We've lost that connection point and the ability to go out there. And I think the other thing that's going to be really difficult is uh, summer camps. I think you're seeing that most of the institutions, including us here in the Midwest, have shut down all their summer camps. So you're not afforded an opportunity to evaluate those prospects, you know, in person. So you have to rely a lot more on tape. And uh, that's, that's been difficult for all, all parties involved. When do you think you might be able to get back on the field again? And the thing is with the unknown, but when do you think right. that could possibly be? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, you know, right now, there hasn't really been any changes to our, you know, camp start date, which is August 10th. I think the thing that's in flux is we typically had a, a pretty good track record of voluntary summer workouts heading into that. And, um, you know, the NCAA came out with a document called Resocialization in Sport, a different phased approach where you would make sure that, the, you know, the number of uh, cases in the state that you live in had been on decline. Um, and then you would start to look at, you know, groups of 10 or less in the weight room, groups of 10 or less on the field. If everything went according to plan with that, then you would go to a, a next tier phase two, which is groups of less than 50 in there. So, you know, I know a lot of the Big Ten, the ACC, a lot of those programs, you know, there, there's a date that people are kind of taking a look at around that, like July 13th for maybe trying to have kids back on campus. And, um, you know, I, I think we're looking at that similar day too, but there's, NCA, State of Michigan, our institution, athletic department. Um, it's hard for me to tell right now. I, I want to share one of my biggest concerns is, you know, we got most programs got shut down that first or second week of March. You got March, April, May, June, July. That's five months, Casey, of like, you know, no organized workouts or activity. And then to go straight into a padded 11-on-11 11 11 football and competition, that's, uh, that's worrisome for me in regards to student athlete health and welfare. I'm concerned about that. You know, I think that's a big jump from lack of activity to go full live kind of contact football that quick. So we have to make smart decisions. Uh, if we're going to have a you know, season, we have to have the appropriate amount of ramp up time to increase the load and the physical activity even before we start practicing football. So there could be possibly a chance that the season may, you could go back maybe June or July. And if you don't, we could possibly see maybe a delay or maybe even in the spring we're talking. Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot, again, mid-July is kind of the, 
the target right now where if you felt like things were good that you could bring students back on campus, I don't think you have to make any sacrifices to the season. Um, if you start pushing into August, you got to look at a couple of different scenarios. Um, sacrificing some games and having shortened seasons or pushing the start of the season back. And, um, you know, and, and if you can't have students on campus in the fall, you're not going to be able to have athletics. And so you start looking for some of those spring alternatives in regards to football. Um, I, I, I just want to go on record and say I think that would be very difficult for student athletes, um, underclassmen to, you know, have a season January, February, March into April, and then turn back around and uh, get right back on this merry-go-round the next fall. Um, that's really difficult on them. So, you know, I, I think at the FBS level, Casey, um, they probably are going to look at that because of the revenues. And, um, you know, a lot of athletic departments being sunk if they can't play football, um, NCA having some serious issues. But I would just raise the question, at what cost? And it feels like if we're going to do that in spring, we're going to be saving revenue and TV contracts. But it's going to come at the cost, in my opinion, of student athlete health and welfare. Um, in a position like yours, um, where, where, are you, where are you at and when do you think you will have a football season this fall? I'm, I'm very optimistic. You know, I think that you're seeing a lot of universities um, in the Midwest that are starting with contingency plans for having to have students back on campus in the fall. I think that there's, you know, um, a lot of great work being done for how that looks, you know, how that looks. I think the three biggest things to take a look at there are class sizes, um, how do we socially distance and do proper things in terms of class sizes, um, housing is an issue, um, and also feed them you know, is an issue too, but I think you've seen some plans here, Grand Valley and other places that are creative in that standpoint. So I think if students are back on campus and we do um, get better with testing and contact tracing and, uh, you know, we can isolate and quarantine thing, I think people feel safer uh, being on teams with 120 people. So I think we have more work to do with, um, you know, I, I, I just don't feel like listening to, to the, the resources I'm in tune with, a vaccine's gonna be available or any type of therapeutic to treat this virus, I think it's gonna come back to testing, contact tracing, uh, maybe a test for antibodies and, and quarantine. I think if we have that in place. I think that you can have 120 guys in a locker room and you feel better about practicing and participating. All right, Matt, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll talk to you later on in the year. Awesome, man, appreciate you having me on.